What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with my top five Apple products of 2012. Now this has been a very busy year with major new products and redesigns, and I've covered just about all of it. So this year we saw spec upgrades to the existing MacBook Pros and MacBook Airs, as well as the Mac Mini, which added Ivy Bridge, USB 3.0, and FaceTime HD cameras. We also saw the introduction of the much thinner 15-inch and 13-inch MacBook Pros with Retina display. The iMacs were completely redesigned at the end of the year, and Apple introduced the thinner MagSafe 2 charging connector for the MacBook Air and the new MacBook Pros with Retina Display. Apple also introduced the iPad with Retina Display in the spring and upgraded it again in the fall with the Lightning Connector, faster A6X CPU, and a 12-watt power adapter for quicker charging. Apple also launched the iPad Mini, iPhone 5, iPod Touch 5th generation, and the iPod Nano 7th generation, which did away with the clip-on form factor and added Bluetooth capabilities and a larger touchscreen and home button to better resemble the iOS experience. The Shuffle also saw a minor update to its coloring and finishes. This was also the year in which Apple transitioned to the smaller Lightning Connector for all of its new mobile devices. This also means lots and lots of new Lightning Connectors, accessories, and adapters. Apple introduced the EarPods to replace the earbuds, which sound substantially better and come standard with the iPhone 5, iPod Nano, and the iPod Touch 5th generation. Other new accessories include the all-new Airport Express, which looks like a white Apple TV, a third-generation Apple TV, which now supports 1080p HD video, the iPod Loop for the fifth-generation iPod Touch, which integrates a lanyard to keep you from dropping your iPod Touch, and a new smart case for the iPad with Retina display, which provides the functionality of the smart cover and full protection for the back of the iPad. The iPad Mini also picks up a smart cover, which in itself has also been slightly redesigned. Now, in terms of software, iOS 6 launched with some controversial changes, including the elimination of the YouTube app and replacement of Google Maps with Apple's Maps. Other enhancements include Passbook Camera with Panorama Mode, Share Photo Streams, Facebook Integration, and Siri on the iPad. OS 10.8 or Mount Line brought a lot more iOS to the Mac, including a notification center, AirPlay mirroring, Twitter and Facebook integration, Share Sheets, Game Sensor, Gatekeeper for stricter app security, voice dictation, iMessaging, and updates to Safari, which brought iCloud tabs and a unified search bar. We also got a complete redesign of iTunes with iTunes 11, which eliminates cover flow and the sidebar for a simpler single window interface, which now places more emphasis on your library or the iTunes stores. So without further ado, let's count down what I picked for my top five. For number five, I've chosen the new iMac. So the iMac has been completely redesigned with a much thinner five millimeter edge with all new internal specs, including Ivy Bridge processors and USB 3.0. They've also eliminated the optical drive, moved the SD card to the back, and laminated the LCD screen to the glass panel, which is now 75% less reflective. Now, the major new feature is optional, which is the Fusion Drive, which combines the speed of flash storage and the cheap capacity of a hard disk drive. This means that you can get the read-write speeds of an SSD, but the capacity of a hard disk drive. And so far, I've been incredibly happy with this feature. For the most part, it feels like I'm using an SSD at all times without the storage compromise. So overall, the iMac looks and performs much better than before, but the future changes are fairly incremental, and really, this is pretty much a design update, and it does look pretty good. For number four, I've chosen the third and fourth generation iPad with Retina display. Now, the third generation iPad introduced in March quadrupled the pixel density of the second gen iPad and enhanced other display qualities, such as color accuracy and contrast. This makes the iPad with Retina display one of the best mobile displays on the market. Apple also bumped up the specs to drive all of those pixels and increase the size of the battery, uh, which took longer to charge. The increased specs and battery also means the iPad became slightly thicker and noticeably heavier, uh, while others complained that it just ran too warm. Now, the 4th Gen iPad introduced in October further bumped up the internal specs and added a FaceTime HD camera and also included the new Lightning connector. They also included a 12-watt power supply to speed up charging times. In the end, the iPad with Retina display made some compromises to bring us that display, but once you go Retina, it's hard to go back. 
For number three, I've chosen the MacBook Pro with Retina display. Now we have both a 13 inch and 15 inch version, which were rolled out at separate times. 15 inch introduced ahead of the 13 inch model. Uh, these are the first laptops to introduce these very high resolution displays, which look tremendous and easily outclass anything you've seen before on the laptop or desktop or anything at this size. The color fidelity, off axis viewing, deep contrasts make this one of the best displays you can find. Apple has also managed to make these much thinner than the existing MacBook Pros by eliminating the optical drive, making flash storage standard, and reducing the thickness of the display by laminating it to the glass. However, at the starting price of $1699 for a 120 gig SSD and integrated graphics, the 13 inch version is fairly expensive relative to its specs. Now the 15 inch model is more impressive with a dedicated GPU, a 256 gig SSD, and a Core i7 CPU all starting off at 2300. For number two, I've chosen the iPhone 5. Now this is the first all new iPhone in over two years and the first iPhone ever to increase the screen size. So going from 3.5 to four inches, the iPhone 5 is still one of the smaller smartphones available right now, but the display is still one of the best and remains easy to use one handed. The iPhone is also much thinner and lighter than before and sports an all aluminum unibody design with glass trim pieces on the back and a polished chamfered edge which further enhances the design and manufacturing precision that makes the iPhone one of the best examples of industrial design today. The iPhone 5 also adds 4G LTE, a FaceTime HD camera, and the lightning connector. This is one of Apple's most polished and perfected devices from the hardware to the software, but outside of LTE, there really is no major new feature or innovation with the iPhone 5. Regardless, the iPhone 5's design, size, camera quality, and software still make it my favorite phone in my gadget arsenal. And for number one, I've chosen the iPad mini. Now the concept of the iPad mini is a little underwhelming. It's a 7.9 inch version of the iPad 2 with older specs and a non-retina display that trails the competition from Amazon and Google and still costs quite a bit more. However, the iPad mini trades some of that bezel space for a much larger display and solves the ergonomics issues via some software. So for example, if you're holding the iPad mini, it does recognize the presence of your thumb versus an intentional press of the display. Now there is no denying the fact that iOS and its app ecosystem is much better suited to the tablet form factor. Combine this with a razor thin and lightweight design, the iPad mini is easily my favorite tablet, even beating the iPad with retina display. It's far more portable, comfortable to handle over extended periods of time, and the 4x3 screen design means the iPad mini is more comfortable to use in any orientation, landscape, or portrait. So in the end, this is a tablet I'm much more likely to carry around than any other. So that's going to do for me, guys, this year. I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly will be covering everything Apple and more in 2013. And hopefully this year we get that Apple TV. So who knows what this uh, year is going to bring. I'm definitely excited. So guys, let me know what your top five Apple products are. This is my personal top five. I don't expect it to be yours. Just let me know. And I'm very curious what your number one would be. So that's going to do for me, guys. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you again in the next one.